It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, I'm the president of uh, Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting. And you can find a link to my work at emailrevealer.com. You can also get an autographed copy of my book there at emailrevealer.com. Uh, if you need an online infidelity investigation, and you give us your spouse's email address, we trace it back to online dating sites and personal ads. Catch them cheating online. If you've been separated from your children or your natural uh, biological parents through the adoption process, we can uh, reunite you through an adoption investigation. Uh, asset searches, you're going through a divorce, a lawsuit, you want to locate adversaries' assets, hidden assets, bank accounts, with balances, <laughs> all kind of fun stuff. Uh, we could do for you there. Um, oh, anyway, emailrevealer.com. That's my website. You can go there. And, and you know, you got some kind of criminal defense case, you can get a hold of me being extorted, blackmailed, stalking intervention, all kind of fun stuff. Email. Well, what a life. What a freaking life. <laughs> How did I get involved in all this? Anyway. Show is brought to you by CartKing.com. That's Cart-King.com. Uh, give me a call at 877-986-7771. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Now, what that is, you're, in the, you're walking through the mall, and they have those carts or those stands. You know, it's called a kiosk. And they sell, you know, gifts and purses and wallets, you know, and coffee, popcorn candy, all different kinds of items they sell from these kiosks. Perhaps your current business wants to add multiple point of sale locations across the country quickly. Let's say you got a business, a storefront, you know, in New Jersey. You can go in 20 malls across the country and, and the blink of an eye, really. It's really it's really not as hard as you think. I really regret, you know, I, I started my beeper company with a kiosk in the Staten Island Mall. They wanted me to go on a cart, and I said, nah, this doesn't look right for beepers and cell phones. I think I want a kiosk. I want something a little bit more substantial with some storage space and, you know, countertops, the signed contracts. I knew what I needed. And uh, back in those days, it wasn't easy to find a, a, a manufacturer to build these things for you, but now they got a whole website. You go there. Um, CartKing.com can be the answer to your needs. CartKing.com is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile retail, coffee, and food carts and kiosks that money can buy. For 20 years, CartKing.com has been working with clients and corporations across America to provide indoor and outdoor carts and kiosks for any application. I saw some of the stuff on their website. If you go to CartKing.com, they, they even build those um, outdoor concession stands, like at Little League Games and stuff like that. The, the permanent, you know, little huts, you know, where they got the... And it's FDA approved, too. Food and Drug Administration approved. So they have all their cooking equipment is correct and on point and everything like that. From large, heated, and secure outdoor retail or food kiosks to smaller, more mobile coffee station carts and kiosks, CartKing.com designs and builds them all. Uh, carts and kiosks are fun. And so are the dozens of designs on the website. Check out the website, corking.com. Or give them a call at 877-986-7771. I understand that they're big fans of the show. They love the show. They love the Opperman Report over at corking.com. So give them a call when you, when you call them up and you want to, or you send them an email and tell them, Ed Opperman sent me. And you get a good deal. Just like my buddy over there at Subash Technosis, the uh, SEO guy, the search engine optimization guy. He gets all excited when someone uh, hires him and says, Oh, Ed. <laughs> hey, mate. <laughs> he was saying on Skype. Oh, my God. Those guys love to chat. I tell you that, man. Okay. Hey, guess what's going on here, man? I am a proud dad. I am a proud father. Uh, my daughter, Victoria, 
Uh, she's before she went to that uh, world school debate down in Florida. She was down there for a week, and then I picked her up last week uh, on a Friday night. I went to the airport and picked. What, what was it? I guess it was Friday night? Yeah, I picked her up at the airport a Saturday night, and then I drove her down. We, we you know we stayed overnight here, and then I drove the next day over to uh, pick up the bus because she had to go to Tahoe, uh, Northern Nevada. Uh, she, actually, she's in Carson City. She's at the legislature, and she was on the the, the legislature website today on their live stream, where they had the the world uh, um, the, the girls camp, it's called, uh, and uh, where they um, were just girls, you know, and they were, they were senators and assemblymen and stuff like that. They passed laws and they debated. I was watching the wrong channel though. I was watching the assembly instead of uh, the Senate. Uh, where she gave all her speeches. Hopefully, they have it archived and I could find it. But oh, I'm so proud. They call her Senator Opperman. She was okay. How how exciting is that? You know, she's only a junior in high school. She's doing all this great stuff, man. She's tonight. She's uh, nominated to be um, picked from 100 kids across the country to go to Washington D.C. Uh, for Girls Nation, and she thinks she has a really good chance. Uh, so she, t- tonight's the nominating process. She's going to vote, and she's going to be, you know, giving speeches and stuff like that. She's on a roll, uh, giving these speeches and these presentations. So she's really uh, all revved up, you know, ready to go, man, and kick some butt. So really, really proud of you out there, Vic. If, if you're a praying person, say a prayer with me tonight for Vic that she wins this thing because it would be what an what a, uh, an experience that would be to be able to go to Washington D.C. Um, for free. You know, they foot the bill for the whole thing. You know, and participate in this nationwide debate that would be great for her college resume as well okay um so much going on i wish i could tell you um i had a day today you wouldn't believe i had a whole week uh, and um, i'm working on stuff man <laughs> i wish i could talk to you about it but you know and, and i also wish that like after i'm dead you know in through history that people can who listen to this show you know after i'm long gone uh knew like all the stuff that i'm doing you know today and stuff like that but you know stuff that affects things in the news you know affects the country <laughs> i just wish you know i wish i could talk about it uh i do have permission to mention some stuff but i'm I, for some reason i feel like holding back tonight i don't feel like telling you uh but you know history was you know being made and uh i just wish anyway maybe if i can talk about it one day you can look back and i'll mention this day a very exciting day, exciting week at all. Uh, things I'm working on here, a lot of stuff I'm working on. Getting a ton of emails and messages about the uh, Arliss Perry case. If you're not following this, there was a development. Uh, the police went to um, execute a search warrant on the security guard. What was his name uh, uh, in that case? Uh, let me see if we can find this real quick. There was a was Cartwood or something like that. No, I'm not going to be able to read this. Anyways, I checked with the uh, Brian McCracken. I check him out. He's in my member section. He 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 believes he was a witness to the murder of Arliss Perry. If you're not familiar with the whole case, Arliss Perry was this girl. She lived in Minot, uh, North Dakota, uh, near an army base, and she went to California near Stanford. Moved with her husband. Her husband became this guy too, who was a, a, a therapist, psychologist who treats kids involved in trauma, and he, he treated the kids at, at Waco and stuff like that. Very bizarre connection there as well and she was murdered in a ritual at this church her body was laid out a certain way she was violated with candlesticks and stuff like that they found semen on a a pew you know and uh, so brian mccracken believes he was a witness to this and then you know came on the show exclusively as a matter of fact they did the only interview with the guy who's in my member section and he's not convinced with this. He thinks that, um, he says, I'm waiting to see the DNA. And others, too, who are very, very intimately involved in this case uh, have contacted me and, and said as well. And there's no doubt that the Orlis Perry murder is connected to the Son of Sam murderers, the Process Church, and the children, and that group up there in Yonkers uh, who will have a connection to Minoit as well, you know, uh, North Dakota. Uh, and the Berkowitz himself said, oh, she was followed from Manoy to, to Stanford to California. She was, she was stalked and followed. There's no doubt. And also, too, it's alleged that um, uh, Menser, Bill Menser, 
uh, was involved in a case too, and called the Second Manson. They used to call him, and we've done some informa- uh, uh, interviews with his ex girlfriend, who claims you know he was a cool guy and he didn't do nothing. We also did an interview with his former private investigator, um, Tony Shapiro, who was I don't, I don't think he's any longer his uh, his investigator. I think they had a falling out because of the show. I think, as a matter of fact. Always some adventure going on around here. You know, we, we cause a lot of problems. <laughs> you got no idea. What was it? Uh, oh, I forget. There was a whole thing going on. Oh, yeah, that, that thing. Oh, the thing about the, the guy who went into the newspaper and shot up all those people at the newspaper. I get people like that. <laughs> threatening me. You know, calling me up. Threatening, you know, claiming I'm, you know, and unhappy with me. Let's put it that way. We had a lot of response last week to that show. We did Socialism Sucks with uh, Todd, uh, was it? Bauman. Todd Bauman. Uh, Joe Sixpack, he likes to call himself. And he, so he wrote a book called Socialism Sucks. And I had a little debate discussion with him. You know, and most people enjoyed it. But, and it's amazing. I get all these comments and all these insulting letters and stuff like that. And you could tell they didn't even listen to the show. All they did was just read the title. <laughs> they didn't listen. They got no time to listen. They, they already got all the answers. They don't need to, they don't need to hear anything. Just let me tell you. Let me tell you, Ed, where you're wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, they just get into Obama phones. Okay. Obama's a capitalist. He's one of your people. He's on your team. You got to defend him, not me. Oh, I'm going to defend Obama. I'm going to defend Hillary. Give me a break. Yeah, it's, it's capitalist. Anyway. It's crazy. It's also crazy. Uh, then last week, too, we had a technical difficulty on Friday night where the show ended after a half hour, and people freaked out over that, too, as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's just nuts around here. Okay. Well, let's get into the show. I don't know how I'm going to put all this thing together. It's all about James Woods and McMartin Preschool. Okay, let's do this. I actually have a chance. We're going to be taking a trip to California, uh, me and my daughter, uh, to visit colleges in California. We're going to take a little road trip in the next week. If we can get some, sell some memberships here. So if you want to get a membership, uh, 60 bucks, uh, 13 months for 60 bucks. I'm, I'm putting another show into an interview I just did recently. I, I did two of them, but one of them, the order didn't come out. But I'm, I'm throwing up a show in the member section shortly. Um, and while I'm there in California, I'm going to do some nosing around, some investigating into the McMartin preschool case. There is some very solid documentation that I can uh, obtain, okay? Um, so if you want to help fund that, oppermanreport.com, become a member, uh, or contact me directly at oppermanreport at gmail.com, and I will uh, uh, give you 13 13- months for 60 bucks it's a big discount now what is the mcmartin preschool case okay it started out in 1983 right have you ever heard the expression satanic panic they say oh that's satanic panic that, that was all there was all those crazy uh, allegations were being made about t- t- satanic cults abusing children in, in preschools and it was all the kids were being brainwashed and they had false memory and there was a whole there's a false memory syndrome and all this and nothing's really it was all proven false it was all discredited oh ha 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 all that's been debunked right and it really hasn't been you know and it really hasn't been it started in 1983 and McMartin Preschool was one of the bigger cases. There was a lot of cases where there was definitely organized, systemic child molestation going on in preschools back in the 80s. And it was being uncovered left and right. And it was it was uncovered in, in McMartin Preschool in 1983. 13 kids came forward. The 13 kids had uh, tears, bruising, anal bleeding. It's no joke. They had um, STDs. This little preschool kid had STDs. And then when they talked to the kids, they talked. They says, yeah, we're being, uh, <laughs> they're doing this to us. They're doing that to us. They killed, you know, they're, they're sacrificing animals. And they took us into tunnels, uh, you know. Okay. We'll get into all that. So the kids started describing bizarre satanic ritual abuse. 
you know. Now, some of their claims were a little wild. They talking about being taken up in a balloon and taken on airplanes and through tunnels and stuff like that. And um, kids, you know, have they, you know they have fuzzy imaginations. You know, they they have trouble distinguishing fact from reality. But there's enough. You know, they talked about orgies at car washes, airports. Um, they talked about how kids would be flushed down a toilet and then come up into a secret room. And they talked about the naked movie star game where they would be in film, you know. Now, the thing about being flushed down a toilet and coming up in another room, when Ted Gunderson got involved in this case back in 1983, right in the beginning, before the um it, there were there were any arrests made when the parents were just in an outrage they went to Ted Gunnison uh, who was the former uh, FBI special agent in charge of Los Angeles uh, he was a retired at that point he was working as a private investigator and he was into this whole thing about satanic ritual abuse uh, investigating these kind of claims in his spare time and uh, he was brought into the case by Jackie Magooley, who was the, one of the mothers of the children here. In fact, they entered into a relationship. He was living with her for a while. And when I spoke to her, uh, he had just stopped uh, living with them. I, I talked to her in, in the 90s. After the internet was around. So about 95, I was on America Online when I ran into her. And she gave me her phone number. I called her up. And, that's, and she told me the whole story about how Ted used to talk to Colonel Michael Aquino every day on the cell phone. And I says, well, why was he talking to Michael Aquino? She says, well, to make himself feel important. That's what she told me. Okay. And she was very upset, too. He was selling the videos of the, the, the tunnel because they had hired a, an archaeologist to examine the, the ground and the soil. So what happened was uh, after the trials were over, uh, the McMartins lost. Uh, they had turned over the deed to their attorney as payment, which is very common in a lawsuit. But, you know, lawsuits make people, I mean, criminal cases, you know, long extended criminal cases, people wind up going broke over these things. So they turned over their deed to their attorneys as part of their legal fees, and he had raised it down. He wanted to build new construction there. And they had a few days to bring in some archaeologists. And he said, you know, he, he did a whole study, he did a whole report, and he says that, you know, he found the tunnels that went underneath to the next property over and came up underneath their bathroom, and it was fresh wood down there. And they found uh, um, the, this photographs of this stuff, too. Uh, fresh um, clamps on plumbing that was underground, you know, that had to be dug down. You know, there, there was no other way to get to it, you know, except where they excavated these tunnels where there was soft fill. Fill that didn't match the other dirt. You know, very, you, the report's online. You could find it. Now, I had a guest on my show. Let me see if I can pull up his name. Here. My notes are really good, too. Let me see. Oh, Dr. Eugene Donald Michael. He's a geologist for, for 50 years. And... Uh, he was brought in by Gunderson before any arrests were made. He came down and he had a, a ground penetrating radar device and he went looking for any anomalies to look for these tunnels, but he couldn't find any. And he's often mentioned that this was all disproven because Eugene Donald Michael went down there and he couldn't find any tunnels. And he's a, a geologist and he's an expert in all this. Okay. And then, and then, so then people say, well, then the Ted Gunderson uh, uh, archaeologist reports, well, Ted Gunderson is a flaky guy, you know, it's probably, you know, when he faked it or whatever, you know, he did it for publicity because Eugene Donald Michael didn't find anything. Okay, well, what I did was I found Eugene Donald Michael. No one's interviewed him in 30 years since 1983. No one's talked to him. They mentioned his name and all these articles and discussions and stuff like that on the internet if you, you know that well he looked for it he couldn't find any tunnels I call the guy up I say hey well, you know do you want to call on the show tell me what you found he says, so he sends me a document of what is fine you know what his findings are it's in my member section at oppermanreport.com you can listen to it, for, to it for yourself okay and he says well yeah well he says well after you know, I went down there when it was all chaos and stuff like that. And they said, uh, I went looking around with my machine to ground penetrating radar and I couldn't find anything. And I said, well, what about this garage here? And they says, well, that garage doesn't belong to us. 
That's the neighbor's garage. And it's okay. So I kept looking around didn't find any tunnels or anything. Now, during that period of time, after they raised the property down to build some new property there, there's a dry cleaners there now, he was called out to the scene again, and they had knocked off the garage. They, you know, demolished the garage. And with his own eyes, he saw a hand-dug basement underneath the garage with a hand-dug staircase. This is not up to code. This was obvious code violation. was dug by hand. And, and you know, he, he describes the kind of clay and dirt it was. And he knows everything like that. And limestone, sandstone, whatever he was calling it. And then it was definitely um, an underground room. Hand-dug. With a hand-dug staircase underneath the garage that the McMartins claimed was not part of their property. So that's all in my member section. You can check that out. Okay, let me see what we're doing here at time. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Perhaps your current business wants to add multiple point of sale locations across the country quickly. Maybe the facility you manage could kickstart revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Well, CartKing.com can be the answer to your needs. CartKing.com is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile retail, coffee, and food carts and kiosks money can buy. For 20 years, CartKing.com has been working with clients and corporations across America to provide indoor and outdoor carts and kiosks for any application. From large, heated, and secure outdoor retail or food kiosks to smaller, more mobile coffee station carts, CartKing.com designs and builds them all. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on the website. Please visit them today at CartKing.com, that's Cart-King.com, or just call them at 1-877-986-7771. That's 877-986-7771. The Opperman Report is brought to you by SubashTechnosis.com. Subash Technosis is a search engine optimization and website design company located in India. So you know you're going to save a lot of money and get top quality service to boot. They offer all kinds of services, business process outsourcing, data entry, banking BPO services, recruitment process outsourcing, software testing, offshore research networking, customer care, press release content writing and distribution, and much, much more. They offer website development, e-commerce solutions, mobile responsive designs. Now, I've personally worked with Subash for over 10 years. This is the man that puts out my press releases. They've done work on my websites, so I can personally recommend SubashTechnosis.com. You can find the link to Subash Technosis at OppermanReport.com and also AwakeRadio.us. People are waking up. They're standing up to those pushing pesticides and GMOs as safe alternatives for a starving world. What about your crap? I tell you, I'd rather eat dirt. So? I drink Life Change Tea. It's an herbal drink, cleansing my body of toxic sludge and nasty chemicals, and of course, ridding the intruders that are hidden in my so-called food. And by the way, Life Change Tea is non-GMO and organic. No fillers, no yuck. Just a great defense against you know what. May the supplement force awaken you. Don't fall to the dark side. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I went to the movies last night. Anyway, enough said. How do you get that herbal drink and change your life? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. You will awaken. You will get stronger and you might even lose a bit of weight. So awaken to life change tea and the many one of a kind supplements at get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. May the supplement force be with you. We all have questions. Did he do it or did he not? We all have opinions, but do we really know the truth? New evidence will now be presented and the ultimate answers will be revealed in the explosive documentary, Serpents Rising. Inspired by the bestseller, Double Cross for Blood, an independent investigation of the trial of the century, the lies, the myths, and the concealed evidence, don't miss Serpents Rising. This excellent documentary film is available at Serpents Rising at Vimeo Videos on demand. Watch it for $1.99. You can have your ad played here at OppermanReport.com.
every Friday night, 5 p.m., and Saturday night, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And on Friday nights, too, we do a live portion for one hour that I just do a live monologue. The ads are very, very inexpensive, and they're also played in the Opperman Report member section. In the member section, you can find all kinds of exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. It's as cheap as $6 a month, $20 a quarter, or $75 for a year. You contact me directly at OppermanReport at gmail.com. I'll set you up with a little special deal there where you get a discount if you PayPal me directly and you can get a copy of my book. I want to thank William Ramsey, who helps us produce the show and book guests. You can find William Ramsey, who's an excellent author, at William Ramsey Investigates on YouTube. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay. This whole thing with the McMartin preschool started in 83 with the accusations. And then there was uh, the arrest, the pretrial investigation went from 84 to 87. This wasn't a, a short uh, period of time. Then the trial ran from 87 to 1990. It was a lo- one of the longest running trials in history, you know, three years. So from 1983 to 1990, this was going on. Seven years. Now, right around, you know, during this, all this controversy is going on, this bizarre couple called Paul and Shirley Eberly pop up and they start writing about McMartin Preschool and, 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 they, and their theory was that there was a politically motivated witch hunt. Now back in the 70s they, they published a pornography publication called Finger. In 72 they wrote uh, uh, Adventures of Mrs. Pussycat a children's novel. Children's book. And then they uh, were involved with the LA Star and then they published The Politics of Child Abuse in 1986 and discusses the false memory syndrome and false child abuse allegations and the daycare abuse hysteria and they heavily, you know, talked about the McMartin priest that was a big witch hunt and false memory, you know, the whole false memory syndrome, by the way <laughs> if it, this false memory syndrome isn't a syndrome it's the name of an organization that they named their organization Syndrome. <laughs> okay. That, there's no such thing as false memory syndrome. That's a, you know, it's like false memory syndrome, Inc. All right. And the people who, who founded that are, are child pornographers and I'm talking about how children at that age enjoy sex. But anyway, but back to these, the Eberleys. They wrote a book called The Abuse of the Innocents about the McMartin Preschool Trial. And Alan Dershowitz called the book a wake-up call to those who believe that prosecutors and their experts can be trusted to do justice in the emotional context of child abuse. So Alan Dershowitz comes out in favor of this book written by a couple of child pornographers about, and that discredits the McMartin preschool case. Now, w- what do we know about Alan Dershowitz today? Well, Alan Dershowitz uh, was accused by Virginia Roberts of being one of the people who, who molested her when she was a child, when she was under the control of Jeffrey Epstein. And she describes Dershowitz as being so nonchalant and casual about this that when she was uh, performing sex on Epstein... Dershowitz would walk into the room and have a conversation with Epstein while she was busy having sex with Epstein. Now he denies this. There was a lawsuit back and forth, defamation, blah, blah, blah. He settled. Okay. But she's never recanted those allegations. Not once. He was very close friends with Jeffrey Epstein. A benefactor of Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein donated money to Harvard. Huge amounts to Harvard. Okay. And and who does Epstein run around now? Protecting and defending and arguing on, on Fox News and all this about this uh, whole Mueller thing. Is a witch hunt. Or witch hunt. Same phrase. Donald Trump. He's become an advocate and defender of Donald Trump. Jeffrey Epstein has. I mean, I mean... Alan Dershowitz has. Coincidentally, Donald Trump was a co-defendant in a lawsuit 
with Jeffrey Epstein over raping a 13 year old. And Donald Trump was the employer of Virginia Roberts, the little girl that was being molested by Epstein and allegedly by her, by Alan Dershowitz. Isn't that odd? <laughs> You know, now a lot of people will say to me, "Oh, Ed's going to go back on his bashing Donald Trump. He's, he just bashes Trump." Everything I've said to you so far is an absolute fact. You know, it's an uncomfortable fact, but it's a fact. Trump was the employer of Virginia Roberts, who was being molested by Trump's friend of fifteen years, Jeffrey Epstein. Dershowitz defends and, and, and hails this book about the McMartin preschool abuse, saying it's all big hoax. And eye opener. It's a wake up call. And he's also defending Trump. He's friends with the pedophile. Louding a pedophile book. And also defending Trump. This is, you know, that, that, those are the facts. Okay. Well, I'll add blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Now, one of the reasons that the whole tables turned and in the public opinion over the McMartin preschool case is due to a couple named Abby Mann and Myra Man, M Y R A, and Mary's Mira, Myra, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Abby Man. Ab, who's Abby Man? Abby Man used to produce Kojak episodes, <laughs> okay, and things like that. But he also was a, a judgment at Nuremberg or some kind of trial like that. You know, he did a big documentary, the, the famous Academy Award win, winning uh, movie. And he became interested for some reason in the McMartin preschool case Abby and Mira man so much so that they were hired by the defense as investigators quote unquote they were working for the defense team and they used their influence in the media and, and showbiz and Hollywood to get a segment on 60 Minutes about the McMartin Preschool and Ray Bucky and McMartin and all the women, you know, exclusively with the defendants. The prosecution wasn't involved. None of the victims were involved. It was just a 60 minute segment about the defendants and how they didn't look like child molesters, do they? <laughs> and this was like the tipping point that changed uh, America's opinion about the McMartin preschool case. As a matter of fact, that segment was filmed in Abby Mann's home. They worked on the fence. They got 60 minutes involved and their home was used to film this segment of 60 minutes, which even the defense team said was very favorable to our, 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 our clients here. Another little interesting <laughs> development with these, with this man couple, this Abby man and Mira man, is Mira man testified that the former prosecutor in the case, Glenn Stevens, gave her his 113 page evaluation of the case. This is before he resigned, he was working on the prosecution of this case. And gave over his notes and his evaluation to these defense investigators in return for $1,000, okay, and 5%, because they, the mans were working on a book and a movie, and 5% of the profits of the book and movie project. So Glenn Stevens resigns from the case and goes to work for the defense and turns over his prosecution notes for a thousand dollars and five percent and then the Abby man and, and Mira man says well we as soon as we got this this hundred we turned it over to the defense team 
<laughs> okay, so we got this. All right. So when you hear how the the families of these little victims, thirteen little victims who had scarring and tearing and bleeding and STDs, and they say, well, this, well there was shenanigans went on here. They had tunnel reports again, all this stuff. That, but people still, and they, they people they lit, they remember the sixty minute show, and they remember a movie. I see it was a made for TV movie involving HBO. Made a made for TV movie called Indictment, the McMartin trial. And who produced this thing? It was produced by uh, Oliver Stone. And also produced by Abby Mann. And it was written by Abby and Mirror Mann. They were the writers of this film. And the film took a very. Um, favorable view of the McMartins and it was impossible and it was a witch hunt and none of this could possibly have happened because well it was just satanic panic and a witch hunt and all this kind of stuff now who starred in this movie in a made for TV movie James Woods James Woods James Woods great actor I, I love many, many James Woods films. There's a movie called uh, um, Joshua Then and Now. Excellent movie. In fact, I'm, I'll probably watch it tonight. It's a great movie. Uh, um, Boost, where he gets addicted to coke. Salvador, where he goes down to Salvador, you know, during the the, the death squads down there. Stuff like that. Please, a journalist goes down. Oliver Stone directed that one, too. Great, great movie is James Woods, okay? Interesting character. Claims he was on the plane a week before the where they, he watched the 9-11 hijackers do a trial run. He was in, interviewed by the FBI. He used to go down to the OJ trial, and he was invited to the back to, to meet with the, the, the Judge Ito. You know, <laughs> Interesting guy. You know, he's on, um, uh, what's that show, The Simpsons, you know? And people say, well, you know, The Simpsons, all this weird stuff going on there. The, one of the... the the writers on that was invited to Bohemian Grove and they got that film of uh, that Trump running for president come down the escalator exactly like it happened later on you know predicting 9-11 what, whatever you think of all that it's going on right <laughs> you know what happened I don't know maybe that coincidence I don't know what but it's there James Woods decides he doesn't need the money all right and by the way, I, confront, I confronted Oliver Stone's son, Sean Stone, about this. He says, well, my, my dad did the movie because you know, they were underdogs and they were wrongly, you know, uh, wrongly. And I said, well, you, you think they were wrongly? Was, well, that, that was the, the, the theme of the movie, though. <laughs> said they were underdogs and they were wrongly convicted. Okay, but then he'll, he'll walk around saying about how, yeah, uh, another newcomer to this battle against pedophilia. By the way, I've been, I've been studying this case since 1983. <laughs> okay, what was going on originally? And, and I don't want to take all the credit you want to look at people like Dave McGowan did great writing on this and Alex Constantine did excellent writing on this and back when he used to be on Usenet Alt McMartin Preschool was called on the old Usenet debating back and forth with the people involved you know this is, this is what was going on back in those days when the internet was real real wild wild west but James Woods decides to, to, to be the face the PR man the front man the spokesperson for a movie made by the McMartin Preschool defense investigators who actually paid off the prosecution in the case. Give $1,000 or 5% of this deal. And James Woods decides he's going to become a part of this project of a whitewash of the McMartin Preschool case. That's, I find that interesting. Okay. And I find that interesting because this week, good old James Woods comes up with a, a tweet. By the way, James Woods, before we get into that, James Woods was also accused. Um, if I pull this up, I might not have this in my notes. I might have screwed this up. He was accused of this little 16-year-old girl who's an actress. Uh, do I have it? I do not have it. I, I did not. Uh, 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 Woods in the six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amber Tamblin. 
claims on Twitter that the actor hit on her when she was 16 years old and invited her to go to Las Vegas, her and her friend. And she says, uh, we're only 16 years old. And he goes, ooh, even better. So James Woods does a movie defending pedophilia, satanic ritual abuse, the face man for this movie. Also, trying to traffic a 16-year-old girl to Las Vegas, from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Comes out with a tweet. And James was a smart guy, too, by the way. He's a genius. He was he's a stupid guy. Okay? Smart guy. Smart. Not dumb like everybody thinks. <laughs> okay, smart. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Perhaps your current business wants to add multiple point-of-sale locations across the country quickly. Maybe the facility you manage could kickstart revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Well, CartKing.com can be the answer to your needs. CartKing.com is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile retail, coffee, and food carts and kiosks money can buy. For 20 years, CartKing.com has been working with clients and corporations across America to provide indoor and outdoor carts and kiosks for any application. From large, heated, and secure outdoor retail or food kiosks to smaller, more mobile coffee station carts, CartKing.com designs and builds them all. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on the website. Please visit them today at CartKing.com. That's Cart-King.com. Or just call them at 1-877-986-7771. That's 877-986-7771. Seven one. The Opperman Report is brought to you by SubashTechnosis.com. Subash Technosis is a search engine optimization and website design company located in India. So you know you're going to save a lot of money and get top quality service to boot. They offer all kinds of services, business process outsourcing, data entry, banking BPO services, recruitment process outsourcing, software testing, offshore research networking, customer care, press release, content writing and distribution, and much, much more. They offer website development, e-commerce solutions, mobile responsive designs. Now, I've personally worked with Subash for over 10 years. This is the man that puts out my press releases. They've done work on my websites, so I can personally recommend SubashTechnosis.com. You can find the link to Subash Technosis at OppermanReport.com and also AwakeRadio.us. People are waking up. They're standing up to those pushing pesticides and GMOs as safe alternatives for a starving world. What about your crap? I tell you, I'd rather eat dirt. So? I drink Life Change Tea. It's an herbal drink, cleansing my body of toxic sludge and nasty chemicals, and of course, ridding the intruders that are hidden in my so-called food. And by the way, Life Change Tea is non-GMO and organic. No fillers, no yuck. Just a great defense against you-know-what. May the supplement force awaken you. Don't fall to the dark side. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I went to the movies last night. Anyway, enough said. How do you get that herbal drink and change your life? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. You will awaken. You will get stronger. And you might even lose a bit of weight. So awaken to life change tea and the many one of a kind supplements at get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. May the supplement force be with you. We all have questions. Did he do it or did he not? We all have opinions, but do we really know the truth? New evidence will now be presented and the ultimate answers will be revealed in the explosive documentary, Serpents Rising. Inspired by the bestseller, Double Cross for Blood, an independent investigation of the trial of the century, the lies, the myths, and the concealed evidence. Don't miss Serpents Rising. This excellent documentary film is available at Serpents Rising at Vimeo Videos on demand. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, so James Woods puts out this tweet the other day. Uh, no date on it, sorry. It's pretty clever. Did we just end sex trafficking on the southern border? Follow the logic. 
Trump's executive order allows parent and child to remain together. In fact, the EO insists they remain together. Sessions is insisting on DNA. So, the sex trafficker can no longer risk getting caught with a child. The trafficker is stuck in detention with the child for what could be months. If DNA comes back, proves they are not related, the adult is now a human trafficker. Sent to an American prison. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Remember the president's December 21st executive order on human traffickers? So he's trying to come up with this theory excusing what is human trafficking. Okay, guys, listen. No matter what your opinion is on immigration or illegal immigration or any of that kind of stuff, what is going on? When you take children away from their parents and you put them in a secret place and they're, they're separated and the, the kids are being transported across the country and <laughs> kept from their parents, okay, that's trafficking. That's child trafficking. Now, well, I'm not going to leap to conclusions. What are they being trafficked for? For what purpose? For financial gain? There is some financial gain. Friends of Trump are building these camps and all stuff like that's going on. But what's happening to these kids? No one knows. There's little girls that are missing. No one knows what's going on with these kids. They're being held in secret locations. That is the definition of trafficking. Okay. Now, whether the the, the motive is to, to just to end uh, immigration, both legal and illegal, to, to discourage it, you know, which is the stated by Kelly and Sessions. If that's it, then that's it. If there's some nefarious, more sexual abuse going on here or pornography going on whatever we don't know but this is trafficking and all the same people who want to talk about pedo gate and and pizza gate and all these advocates for children just came flooding out of the woodwork in, in the past year or two because like i said i've been involved in this since 1983 on the front lines by the way but now all these people they want to make excuses over this and who would they, they want to have their spokesperson in on this? James Woods. <laughs> James Woods. The poster child. The face. The one who created the, the phrase Satanic Panic. The one who, who, who put his face in and for the defense team, the defense investigators of the McMartin Preschool. The same people cheering him on are the, <laughs> are the ones who claim to be concerned about this. Uh, what's going on. But they, they, for a lot of people don't have the experience. They don't have the knowledge. They don't know what's going on. They, they haven't lived. They haven't been following this stuff for years. They just stumbled into this. They think pedo camps in Tucson. They believe all that nonsense because they're new to this. They were talking about the Walmart tunnels and uh, Nibiru a couple of years ago. <laughs> okay. And 2012, you know, Awakening and all that. That's what they were selling a few years ago. Now they're selling this. And they don't know what they're doing. And they're stupid. But James Woods isn't stupid. And he knows that the president's December 21st executive order on human traffickers has nothing whatsoever to do with human traffickers. It's about human rights abuses. Okay? Now, I me, mean, I've read it. And I'm going to read a part to you right here. Where is it? <laughs> I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America find that the prevalence and severity of human rights abuse and corruption that have their source in whole or in substantial part outside the United States, such as those committed or directed by persons listed in the annex to this order, have reached such scope and gravity that they threaten the stability of the international political and economic systems. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's able to seize their assets. If they're, they're foreign citizens, he can seize their assets here in the United States because they're involved in human rights violations such as those committed or directed by persons listed in this annex to this order. You can Google this. Just Google uh, executive order blocking the property of persons involved in serious human rights abuse allegations. You'll come to the White House thought of, you can read the entire executive order, and you can see what the annex is. There's a list of names there, 30 names. You can Google each one of those names, and you'll see for yourself, by the way, the, the word human trafficking, okay, doesn't exist in this, human, in this uh, executive order whatsoever. It's human rights abuse. Now, people can say innocent, well-meaning people can say, well, Ed, isn't human trafficking come under the heading of human rights abuse? Isn't it a human right not to be trafficked? Ed, Ed, you're so closed-minded. You, you, you just want to bash Mr. Trump. 
Because Mr. Trump's a good man, and he wants, he's going he's gonna to round up the elite pedophiles. And this is an executive order uh, about human rights abuse. And it, well, that includes human, human trafficking, Ed. He says himself, if you read it, that's well-meaning, okay? But if you read it, such as those committed or directed by persons listed in the annex to this order. If you look at those names, there's 20 names on there. It'll take you 20 minutes to Google those 20 names. And you'll see that not one is even similar, slightly related to human trafficking or child trafficking whatsoever. But it's just one of these things, man, where this myth gets created. No one bothers to read the damn order. They just read the tweet and they believe it. And they, and they read a tweet by the guy who's the spokesperson for the people who set the McMartin pedophiles free. But somehow, in some twisted logic, Trump's uh, rounding up elite pedophiles with QAnon and, and James Woods, is he's a hero too and because he's against you. Because look at his tweet. There's one person in the annex listed who was involved in uh, Oregon, selling human organs. So people say, well, weren't some of those victims children in? They were in child, <laughs> they were trafficked, were they? Okay, well, that's a huge stretch, man, okay? <laughs> All right, <laughs> give me a break. But anybody can go through that annex. Google those 20 names, and you'll see there's not a single thing in that executive order even slightly related uh, to child trafficking, human trafficking, sex trafficking, or any of that. So what do we have here? We have uh, people uh, who are caught up in this uh, new wave, this new fad of being uh, um, child advocates, right? And they're pedogate and pizzagate people, well-meaning people, but they've got this confusion in their head that somehow Trump's on their side. Trump, who's friends with a pedophile, 15 years buddies, being defended by a guy who was accused of being a pedophile, Alan Dershowitz, Alan Dershowitz, who defended and lauded this book, written by these people that were child pornographers, again, <laughs> coming up with this weird satanic panic theory, and James Woods, again, Abby Mann, what they do, their actions are 100% opposite of what this fantasy you have, that they're somehow, have a secret plan. To round up elite pedophiles. How about Sly Stallone? <laughs> okay, by the way, he's come under an indictment since it's my last show. Isn't he sort of an elite guy? Wasn't he accused of being with a 16-year-old? <laughs> okay, you know? All right? I don't know if he's a Democrat or but I don't know what he is. What difference does it make? There's plenty of Democrats and Republicans, all of them doing this. And everything in between. 90% of them are uh, capitalists, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think all of them are capitalists. Oh, jeez. Okay. Anyway, guys, so that, there's my little outline for you about James Woods and his involvement in covering up the uh, the McMartin preschool. James Woods now coming up with this wacky theory about how uh, Trump putting little kids in cages is somehow really a, 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 a secret plan uh, to catch sex traffickers. Really? Is, is this how stupid uh, and a gullible we've become you know there's so much white noise out there these days man and there's so much static and, and nonsense and gibberish being peddled you know that, that, that I know this this will reach a very small even, even the people who listen to the show okay aren't gonna pick up what I'm saying to you. and I'll even say okay, I was involved in, 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 in I was the defense and I was the investigator okay for the plaintiff and a lawsuit against Donald Trump Okay, that's what I'm, I was released to say today. I released my NDA to say. I'm allowed to say that. 90% of the people who listen to this show won't even, won't even pick that up, won't, won't hear it, won't understand it, and won't know what it's connected to because they, they, they're just not paying attention. There's so much static. There's so much white noise. And I believe it's on purpose. I believe that there's, there's, these people are deliberately creating confusion about these issues so that they continue with these crimes. And if you're doing one of these shows, okay, where, where you're out here just rambling your mouth and talking about QAnon and, and all this, not, QAnon is just like the, the Walmart tunnels and Jade Helm and all that crap, okay? And, and I, I know a lot of people are well-meaning, all right? And, and you want to just say, you know, you're, you're hoping behind, hope you saw this uh, 
uh, what do you call it? You saw this uh, apprentice show, and you believe he's a real guy, and he's a good, you know. Uh, and you, you're the first thing to say is, well, Ed's a liberal, okay, <laughs> and he's just bashing Trump. Everything I've said to you, to go through it step by step, line by line. Google everything I've said to you tonight. There's not there's not one thing that's inaccurate. There's there's not one thing that's made up. But if to believe the other side, you got to take these leaps and bounds. That the QAnon is a real secret, top secret guy, and he's got the secret information. You, to believe this stuff, you got to take leaps and bounds. What what I'm telling you is fact. This wacky theory that Woods comes up with. What I'm telling you is fact. Okay, it's hard fact, but it's real. All right. All right. Sometimes I just want to give up. And I think I'm talking to the air sometimes. I, I did that show about the socialism sucks, man. And, and people don't even, uh, didn't even listen to the show. They just read the title and start emailing me. But, I, but it's so much better too without YouTube, man. Now that YouTube's, uh, I'm not getting all those freaking 200 messages a day with that nonsense. Anyway, history will judge me. <laughs> okay. If you like the show, um, especially if you want to hear more about this McMartin case, I can get you solid proof of McMartin. Nobody cares. You know, I, I can get solid proof about McMartin. You know, I'm, I'm trying to take this trip to California. So if you want to support the show and support my efforts, you can become a member in the member section. You get exclusive content, exclusive shows. There's that Arliss Perry show in there. There's that McMartin preschool show in there. Uh, and just those two alone are worth 60 bucks, but you get 13 months of membership for 60 bucks. We have videos of the Jeffrey Epstein Inc. Uh, search warrant execution of his mansion down there in Palm Beach. And we have um, all the Jeffrey Epstein documents and the court documents in there, uh, Trump University documents and court docs in there, which a lot of stuff is exclusive. I got in there exclusively. No one else has it. The 24 page letter um, from Epstein's attorney where he said he helped create the Clinton Foundation. You know? People quote me, you know, <laughs> you know, like they have it. I'm the guy that has it. <laughs> All right. All in a member section, guys. You know, if you want me to keep doing this work, we got to support it. You know, say so become a member. You contact me, OppermanReport at gmail.com. I'll give you 13 months for 60 bucks. And I want to give another shout out to Shane McKay out there who, who does all the editing and audio enhancements and does the commercials for me and stuff like that. Thank you so much, Shane. Uh, great work. There's a link to his, um, uh, I want to give a shout out to Shane McKay. You know, there's a lot of obstacles to producing the show and to recording the shows and, and doing these interviews, especially when you're dealing with the, the phone service and overseas phone calls and Skype, the audio levels of the guest and the host. So what we do now is when I record these shows, before we air the shows, except for the live segment I do Friday nights, we send the audio file over to Ireland. So Shane McKay, it's spelled S-E-I-N. And it's a gentleman who came up from Ireland and he volunteered to take my audio and enhance it and edit it down. And, and now even too, he's editing the commercials for me in and out. And he's our resident audio engineer. And he's doing all this just to support the show here. Provides high quality audio and music production services remotely from his professional sound studio over there in Ireland. So if I can send him my tapes from here in the U.S., I send him the email and the MP3. You could do this from anywhere in the world, wherever you are, England, Ireland, the United States, wherever you are, and Shane can handle it for you. He does audio editing and mastering, production management and technical support, audio enhancement and restoration, sound technician, and you can find him on Upwork.com under S-E-I-N and then the letter M, M as in McKay. But his email address, S-E-I-N-M-A-C-K-A-Y at gmail.com. Shane, I can't thank you enough for helping out here. Uh, and all you do for us, he's an Irish lad up there in Ireland. Uh, we don't hold that against him, though. And a lot of good folks up there now. Let's see what we're doing here on time. Once they're locked in that car, they think they got to listen to the show. iHeart, iTunes, Spreaker, uh, Podbean, Podcast, YouTube, all that stuff. We're played everywhere, all over the place. You can't miss the show. Ten different internet stations, People's Internet Radio, a public streaming network. AwakeRadio.us, IPM Nation, and now on Ocelli.com, on uh, Chuck Ocelli put us on his station. So you can't, uh, uh, you know, it's a rock bottom price to advertise on the show, and that's how you help support the show. Also become a member, OppermanReport.com, uh, or contact me for a discount, OppermanReport at gmail.com. Thank you so much, John Elite.
And I'm looking forward to being stalked by all these characters here. <laughs> you got me hooked up with that. That's www.elitedarkesthour.com. That's A-O-I-T-E. We'll have his book in the uh, Opperman Report uh, book store on our website. 